Okay, so here are some examples of converted uh, real 7.62 AK magazines uh, that will work. The process of doing the AK-74 magazines are basically the same. So here we have the Type 1, the very first AK mag ever produced. It's very heavy and thick, so this is a cool thing to have in the collection. And here's the Zastava Yugoslavian made M70 magazine. And here's the Chinese Type 56 magazine. As you can see, it has no spine compared to other AK magazines that have a, have a spine. So it's a tad slimmer and more uh, nice to have in your fingers when you hold it. More comfortable. And here we have uh, American Pro Mag uh, plastic magazines. And as you can see, it has uh, bullets in it. It's just uh, paper that I printed and designed in Photoshop. Uh, I will release this uh, sheet for free. If you look in the description, you can print them out yourself and just cut them out and slide them down. So this is the Pro Mag. And the technique to do all these different type of mags are all the same. The majority of these uh, magazines I got from Sib Militaria in uh, Germany. But this one I had to import from the US to get here in uh, Sweden. So what's the difference of a converted real magazine from a standard airsoft magazine? Well, first of all, if you look at this part here, this is plastic. So if you drop it, the magazine is broken and you can't fix it. But with a real converted magazine, this part here is steel. So, so you can hammer it and drop it in the ground, it won't break. So the main thing is durability. This one you can drop in the pavement and it will hold, it will not break. If you drop this, it will break pretty quick. Uh, also, if you look at the finish, the real ones are often from real war, so they have uh, cool patina and uh, writings on them, for example. And the airsoft ones are just boring painted black, while most of these are blued or parkerized, for example. Also, these converted magazines have a more realistic length. If you look at the lips, uh, the airsoft ones are shorter, as you can see here, just cut off in the top, while the converted magazines have higher lips and is spring pressured by the real magazine spring from the real one. So this will always feed since it's pressured all the way up uh, inside of the gun. So you won't have misfeeding or sitting loose and racketing around like the <laughs> airsoft ones do. Uh, and as you can see, uh, with the added lips, it's very close to an unmodified real magazine. If you look at it like this, it's hard to tell any difference. But the thing that gives it away is these tops here that has been cut off in order to let the gearbox and such uh, come down. Back in 2006, I made a guide to convert real magazines to airsoft. And it basically looked like this. It had the top cut off and just inserted internals. Very easy to do, but in this guide it's updated with the added feeding lips. Actually an update of my old guide made by CPT from Sweden. So a lot of cred goes to him for actually getting this cool new design. Let's disassemble one of these real updated uh, magazines conversions and see how it looks on the inside. So here's what a converted magazine looks like when disassembled. What we have is a real magazine shell with the lips cut off and trimmed down back and in the front. Other than that it's the real thing. And here's the airsoft uh, internals. What I've done is trim down the back and remove some materials here and here in order to have it to slide in easily. As you can see, it will hold in the top like this. Uh, also, I have sprayed painted gold here. You may ask why, but if you look at this hole here, it's to check if it's loaded with ammo when it's full on the real one. So when you push it in, it looks like it's fully loaded. And to keep it all the way up, I have used the real magazine spring and just cut it down in this length. And here's the magazine end cap. This is how it's assembled later. Push the internals in and take the magazine spring, like so, just like on the real one. And then push this forward. And there it is. It sits 
very solid and now it's spring upgraded. And now you know the basics of the build, so let's get started building one. Okay, so let's get started. Here's our real magazine. So the first thing we need to do is to disassemble it. Here's our magazine spring and follower. So we put these aside for the moment. And then I'm going to use a white marker to mark the areas I need to cut off. The top is kind of simple. All you need to do is cut off this rounded part. So just follow this line. Something like that. Same on this side. And on this front there's a hook that connects into the gun. This is too big so we need to have it to about 4 millimeters. I'm going to mark that out. That looks right. And then even this out here. Follow that line. And the same here. 13 millimeters. this much. So this will be cut off and that is because the gearbox comes down here so it fits. And now we have marked up our magazine it's time to cut it off. When I cut the magazine I will put it in a vise but be sure not to squeeze this too tight because then you will squeeze the mag and the internals won't fit. So just enough so it sits there and won't pop off. You can cut this with a Dremel or with a hacksaw, but I will use an angle grinder, which is the fastest way. Here's the rough cut, I'd say it's a pretty good cut to start with. And now I'm going to take off the rough edges. You can do this by hand with a metal file or with a machine like this. This uh, looks about right for now, but we also need to take off a few millimeters here. So it, it will enter the gun, because this part here will block, so I'd say remove maybe a millimeter or two. When you do it, start with less and test fit it on your gun. If it won't enter, take off some more, so that you don't won't do too much in the beginning, because you can reverse the process. So always do some test fitting meanwhile you are doing this. So now let's do a test fit. And it fits. If you're having trouble to get this to fit, the most common problem is that you have too much material here on the top or need to trim down the back. That's a nice fit. So now it's time to disassemble the Airsoft magazine. I use the SEMA magazines because they're cheap and they're good internals. I start with removing the pin. If you have a Sastava magazine, I recommend to save this for later and I will show why. If you have like a Russian magazine or any of the most kind of magazines, you won't need this. But I recommend to save it anyway. And then remove this part. Push the internals out, like so. And here you have the internals. So what we need to do is cut off some materials. We need to cut off this part, and the sides here, and this added square also here. And we need to round the edges here, and round the edges here. This will go, this will go, and also round off here, also grind off these. Be sure not to grind off these parts because here's 
the screws that hold the magazines together, it's very important. And then take a file to remove some uh, roughness because the plastic melts. Yeah, that's a nice fit. So now let's move on and assemble this. So here are two shells and that is because there are two ways on doing it. So the first and easiest way is if that you have the regular AK mags and not the Sastava mags because the regular AK mags has these dimples inside. You can see on each side that stops the followers. The Sastava mags does not have these because they have a bolt carrier stopping function with their magazines which is kind of cool on a real gun. But these ones here are very good for your airsoft internals because when you push them in they will have a natural stopping point and if you have this type of mag you can just fast forward to the next step but if you don't and you have a Sastava mag you need to add a pin here that goes through and stops the mag from popping up when you have the internals in. So what we need to do is take our pin from the airsoft magazine and drill a hole here so it can push through and then you take the pin push it in and when you have it like so there's some millimeters left I take some Loctite and then hammer it in and now it will stop the internals from popping out Take the internals and push it all the way up. Here you can see it blocks it, but it's still too far down. It needs to come up some more. So I mark out here with the pencil and here. Now I have markings where the pin is. I take out the internals again. And here's my marks and I'm going to remove some materials so that the pin can go inside of it a few millimeters. Something like this will do it, and as you can see, it fits perfectly. And some space to push it down and up. I'm going to spray the internals with uh, some gold spray. I use the Molotovs Urban Fine Art Gold because this is the best uh, chrome and gold reflective spray paint I have ever come by. Yes, something like that is enough. While I'm letting that dry, I'm going to glue all the metal parts that I have been grinding material off. For that, I'm using this uh, random Schnell Brunering. It's some German uh, bluing. You can find this at most uh, gun shops or online. They are bluing for aluminum and steel. And this one is for steel. It doesn't take much at all. When you do this, I recommend having gloves because this is very poisonous. I really should too, but uh, I like to live dangerously. And you just rub it like so. And as you can see, it's having a chemical reaction, making the metal black. And that should do it. And now the internals uh, have uh, dried with the gold paint. It has a nice reflective to it. Before installing them, I usually spray some uh, silicone uh, oil on them, both on the internals and the inside, so it will move around easier. And here you can see the brass bullet. Uh, and to keep this in place, we need to add the magazine spring. Here, <coughs> here, oh. here it is. And of course you won't need the full length. I usually take about this much. If it's too much, just cut it down, but just take a little bit each time so it won't get too loose because you need to have some pressure. And then just fold this down. And now test assemble it. Yeah, that seems to be good space. Sits very tight. And there's no sound from this magazine as there are on the airsoft ones. 
So now let's test it with the gun and do some shooting tests to make sure everything went as we wanted it to be. And now let's insert the magazine. And that means magazine is complete.